Are you quite obsessive, Johnny? I mean, a lot of a lot of elite sports people are are obsessive. Um, are you someone who who drives yourself to the point that others might look at you and think, "Christ, hello"? I don't know. It depends who you ask, really. You know what I mean? If you ask someone that's unbelievably chilled out, they probably think that I'd be. What, what does Laura know? make of your your training regime and and the pressure you put on yourself and the role that you have within your country's sport? It is a good question. It's, it's something that I consider a lot. You know what I mean? I do put myself under a lot of pressure and it can it can get on top of me at times and it can leak into other parts of your life, you know, your family life and, you know, other things in, in your life that uh, it shouldn't. You know what I mean? You need to park it at some stage. But when it means a lot to you, you know, and, and that's where, you know, you can come in for criticism as well when you, you get riled up on the pitch or, you know, let things get to you in the heat of the moment. But when you care, that's that's, that's what happens sometimes. But sometimes there's a, there's a line that you cross where you kind of think it's not that important uh you know you, you need to enjoy it and, and chill out as well so it's it's a balance really but i probably wouldn't have had some of the successes i've had without being a little bit like that and needing to rein it back a little bit do you worry about filling the void when the time comes to hang up your boots or will you go into coaching will you find something else that you can put and channel that energy into yeah i worry about the void daily you know what I mean especially when it's the last year of my contract the uncertainty around that the uncertainty around COVID and what's what, what's the state of the game going to be at the end of the year will any of us have jobs you know the, all those things be going through your mind but yeah the void about what, what I'm going to do post rugby it's another reason why I want to I want to keep going I don't know what I'm going to do I don't know what I'm going to do post rugby um, and that's I probably need to get on top of that over the next eight nine months because if if the union don't want to uh, keep me well then I'm going to have to have something to go to so we'll see do you do much for your mental health Johnny you, you said um, that you're obviously going what, look for physios and other areas and stuff sometimes stuff can get on top of you do, do you work on that yeah it's a uh, it, it is an area where I suppose Joe Schmidt was probably the first one that to really highlight it with us in Ireland uh, sort of midway through his, his tenure with us and it was something that I kind of pushed away at times uh, the mindfulness or that meditation side of things and he was trying to get us to do it like in a group scenario push it away push it away push away and I can't remember where the the sort of eureka moment with me came from but I, I kind of was reading something or listening to a podcast and I said Jeez, I need, really need to get on top of this I'd be quite a stressed person you know what I mean like overactive uh, mind all the time worrying about things it's just been like that all my life so I, I think I've definitely improved on that side of my game over the last probably five or six years um, and again something I wish I knew a little bit younger uh, a little bit earlier in my career the value of it and I struggle with it still like in terms of you know using it every day I, I do sort of go into that space a lot more now yeah 